Welcome to Jumpers for Goalpost, your weekly show for non-league football across the Midlands. Going to start off this week with some great news for a local non-league stalwart. The chairman of the Stafford Town Football Club has been recognised for his years of dedication and hard work in the New Year's Honours list. So congratulations go out to Gordon Evans, who has helped transform the side into a community club in recent years. And Gordon has been awarded a British Empire Medal. So congratulations from all of us, Gordon. A well-deserved honour. Paul Smith, the manager of Bromsgrove Sporting, has responded to the events that took place at Lime Meadow, um, Alva Church, when uh, supporter Rick Edwards had his life saved by the use of CPR and a defibrillator. And he's responded by launching a crowd-giving appeal to supply as many non-league clubs as possible with defibrillators. Um, I've been happy to contribute, as I know a lot of people um, have done. If every viewer of Jumpers for Goalposts added uh, just a tenner, what a difference we could make. Uh, well done, Smudger. And the address is, if you go to www.justgiving.com forward slash crowdfunding forward slash Paul hyphen Smith hyphen six five five already raised over two grand that will make a huge difference to a number of clubs right going to start off the highlights this week in the southern premier league redditch united hosted stratford town on saturday here are the highlights courtesy of stratford tv right, number three is lee thomas number four is daniel summerfield Number five, Luiso Recky. Number six, Liam Francis. Number seven, Justin Marsden. His career in the league, including Boston City, where he's been for quite a few years, so we wish Tim all the best. And also, a big welcome to our officials today. Oh, oh, oh. 
Just to make things even more difficult for Redditch, they had to travel to Edgar Street on Monday to face high-flying Hereford. So at New Year's Day at the home of the Bulls, here are the goals, courtesy of Hereford TV.
was a busy weekend in the Evistick Northern Premier League. Um, on, let's start with Saturday. Hensford Town travelled to the Giant Axe to face Lancaster City. Coverage from Tallmouth Productions. Owen Town welcome Buxton to the Grove and what a start to the game there was don't take your eyes off this one Hales Owen versus Buxton coverage courtesy of Yelts TV <laughs> Sterbridge had an excellent 4-0 win at Marine. Russia Olympic drew while there were defeats on Saturday for both Stafford Rangers and Sutton Coldfield Down. On New Year's Day, uh, pretty much a full programme. And the game dubbed El Staffico took place at Keys Park between Hensford Town and Stafford Rangers. Here are the goals from Tallman Productions.
A great New Year weekend for the Pitmen, and they are now just outside the playoffs. Hales Owen travelled to Sutton Coldfield Town. Here is the all important goal. <laughs> What about that for a screamer from Jordan Goddard? A goal well worthy of winning a game and uh, a vital three points there for the Yelts. Now Peter Ray visited the Don Amot Stadium to see Michelobos Sports take on Colville Town. Here are the goals from that game. The Don Amot Arena in Mikulova and Mikulova Sports are hosting Colville Town in this Northern Premier League Premier Division match. New Year's Day, uh, it's a bit cool at the moment but fairly clear but rain is actually due during the game this afternoon. So most people almost certainly will be hiding under cover. Clinton Morrison will be starting for the hosts. Um, perhaps not needed as a TV pundit today and I love the fact that Don Amott is chairman of uh, Michelova Sports because I remember the advertisement that used to be on Midland Central TV Don Amott King of Caravans memorable brilliant advert and uh, let's see how this game goes it's uh, virtually kind of a local derby this afternoon pitch is quite heavy had there been rain this morning I believe the game might have been in doubt but let's hope it goes ahead and uh, lasts the full 90 minutes plus uh, here come Colville again powerful run forward a little flick and one two must be a chance and it's in and one nil immediately to the uh, visitors Colville take the lead and uh, that's a really good move quick and incisive and goalkeeper King was beaten Rain coursing down. McGrath is over it, and so is Turner. There's uh, a few words being spoken by the referee to the defensive Colville Wall. And uh, this is a great opportunity for Nicolova to maybe regain parity. Ready for it now. McGuire takes it. It's a, and it's gone in. It did seem that Coton maybe had got his hands to that, but the ball's in the left corner. And after 70 minutes, John McGuire pulls his team level. On the uh, home side, looking sprightly. Morrison. Oh, that's a good finish. Morrison laid it off and the ball was smacked in. And it's 2 1 to Mikulova, just like that. A really good finish. I think it's Dales who scored it. fight because the goalkeeper won't give the ball back and uh, that looks pretty nasty in there. The goalkeeper's really lost his temper. Now Watson will take this corner on the right hand side after the trouble has abated. No bookings. Over it comes towards the edge of the penalty area. It's cleared by Nicolova only as far as Watson again. Watson gets in the cross towards the far post. Little flick on by a defender. Blair Anderson gets past the defender. In comes the low ball and it's gone in. It's gone under the goalkeeper. And it's now 2-2. And I think Bryant is going to get booked for his uh, 
having a go at the goalkeeper. But 2-2 and Blair Anderson will take credit for the goal, I'm sure. Um, elsewhere, leaders Altrincham suffered a surprise home defeat at the hands of Witten Albion. 4-3 that one and Starbridge put five past Rush Olympic. So their mid-season blip seemed to have uh, disappeared and Starbridge will now be on a bit of a promotion push. Two games to look out for this weekend. There's a local derby at Dales Lane as Rush All Olympic play host to Stafford Rangers, managed by the former management team of the Picks there. And inform Hensford travel to Nantwich Town and another win for the Pitmen could see them in the playoff places. Into the Northern Premier League, Eva Stick South. Can anyone stop Baseford United? Last, well, last Saturday we thought there was a potential banana skin for them. They faced Corby Town at home. Here are the goals from Baseford TV. Goal for Baseford on 40 minutes, number 5, Dion Meekle. Been on 42 minutes, number nine, Kieran Wells. Basement on 18 minutes to the 10, Liam Hurd. Base on 84 minutes, number 16, Aidan Austin. Another great win for Baseford. George Cater scored a hat-trick for Chase down in a 4-0 win. And how about Lincoln United? They beat Belper Town 8-1. On New Year's Day, Alba Church grabbed a last-minute winner against Romulus. Baseford United won again. Chase down were beaten 4-3 by Frickley Athletic. And Market Drayton got a much-needed win. This weekend, Chase down versus Alf Church is the standout fixture. While Market Drayton will fancy their chances away at Belper Town who seem to be struggling. Time for the total motion middle and football league now into the Premier Division. And uh, with the top four not in action due to the weather, Coventry Sphinx had the chance to make inroads. And they welcomed Coventry United to Sphinx Drive. What a belter of a game it was. Here are the extended highlights from our friends at Coventry United TV. Picked up by Quirk, launched towards that penalty area, Harkins in there. Faulkner strikes one, charged down by the Coventry United defender, Faulkner again, and a great start by Dan, an early goal for Coventry Spinks! Within a minute of the first whistle, Chris Sterling picks up on the rebound and squeezes it under the ex-Spinks goalkeeper, Scott Dutton. 
the worst possible start for the Red and Greens. The first burst of pressure from the home side results in a goal. Harkin tries to cut in from the left flank. He's got Sterling in the box. Harkin going alone. Slide from Brennan. Penalty. Brennan sliding in recklessly from behind, taking out Ryan Harkin. The challenge had to be made as Sterling was ready to hit one level with the goal. But things have just gone from bad to worse for Coventry United. A goal down within 60 seconds as we head towards the half hour mark. The home side have the chance to double their money. It will be the scorer of the opening goal for Coventry Spinks, Chris Sterling. To add a second goal to Spinks' scoreline. In all fairness, despite the opening goal, it's been a very even affair. Not a particularly exciting one either. But Sterling has the chance to excite the Sphinx fans just a little bit more. And he sent Dutton the wrong way. And Chris Sterling puts the Sphinx firmly in control against their former tenants. Coventry Sphinx 2, Coventry United 0. And it's a double for Sterling. Brennan launches it forward, it's past Kif Musa, down the way for Shaquille McDonald, racing towards the space defence, deflected and in! One of all times to score! Shaquille McDonald on his commentary on his debut! Has made himself a fan favourite! Within 40 minutes of his first start for the Red and Greens, it took a wicked deflection, wrong footing the Coventry Sphinx goalkeeper Jake Allingan. A real shame for the Sphinx shot stopper. But you don't win the raffle if you don't buy a ticket, I tell you what. McDonald bought a ticket and he won. It's 2 1. Valence in some space. Can we get the cross in? And it's McDonald again! And the incredible save by Allingan. How on earth did he get his hands to that ball in such a short space of time? Well, oh, Madonna, not exactly the tallest player on the pitch, but he's got, he got his bond to that one. And if it wasn't for an outstanding reflex stop from Allingan, United would be level. Harkin taken out while sliding Dan Brennan, not a man you want to get in the way of is Dan Brennan. There's a neat ball to find Rankin in space. Wind makes himself available, as is Shaquille McDonald into the area and a ferocious strike over the net. Well, we don't know that much about Shaquille McDonald's It's Coventry United debut today, but I tell you what, from seeing him for 40 minutes, he looks very dangerous indeed. Looks like a cracking signing from Terry Anderson. United will continue the move. Glasgow finds Craig Reid, brings it down, and it's just wide. Oh, Allingan just getting a hand to it. And that hand is all that separated United from an equalising goal. Well, stand up and take a bow. Jake Allingan, he's been exceptional in this match. It was very difficult for Spinks to find a replacement goalkeeper for Scott Dunn when the ex-Wolves man left and came to United, but they have found a gem in Jake Allingan. Faulkner keeps the ball away from Lewis Rankin. Faulkner's got plenty of space to work on the right flank. Balance comes across to try and block him off. Takes it around, Balance shot charged down by Barnett. It's Faulkner and it just curls away from the net. And Scott Dutton is furious. Dunn is absolutely livid with his teammates. A two-man wall awaiting Lewis Rankin. We've seen him do special things with that ball this season. It goes in towards McDonald. And it's a, it's, I don't think the goalkeeper knew much about it. McDonald burning it straight into the, into the back of the Coventry Springs goalkeeper, Jake Allingan. It fell kindly from McDonald. A great free kick from Rankin. But McDonald couldn't divert it either side of Allingan. Harkin tackled well by Brennan, but it's picked up by Faulkner on the left flank. Tries to cut in. Harkin turns and a brilliant parry by Dutton. The first time that he's been called into action today. Where he hasn't been picking the ball out of his net. 
And we'll enter that 55th minute with a corner kick for Coventry. Spinks on the right flank, sends it in. It's towards Quirk at the far post, and there it is for Spinks. Michael Quirk's looping header evades the Coventry United defenders on the line. The goalkeeper turned defender, the former Sky Blues man, Michael Quirk, has surely put this game to bed now. And Coventry Spinks restore their two goal advantage. A towering header from Quirk, nothing the back line could do about it for the Red and Greens. And Coventry United are right back to where they started. It's Spinks 3, Coventry United 1 in the Coventry Derby. Goal kick onto the head of Brennan, bounces towards Aaron Wynn. United really do need to change things up. They're going to have a chance at taking some points from Spinks' drive. Cox races down the left flank, trying to take it away from Quirk. He's charged the clearance down. It's McDonald towards Lewis Rankin. Gets the shot away! Nestled into the bottom corner! And you know they try and get the ball back, and they have done now. A composed low strike by Lewis Rankin. Game on at Spinks' drive. And never say die attitude from Coventry United. And the man who has proved to be the difference on so many occasions with the Red and Greens this campaign is at it again to give Terry Anson's side a route back into this fixture. It spinks free, United 2. Whips it in, who's in there? It's not towards the net, and there it is for Spinks again! Immediately, Coventry Spinks! I've got the equaliser, I think it's Jamie Towers! It's difficult to tell, but I believe it's Jamie Towers he scored! It is indeed Jamie Towers, it has been confirmed. A towering header from Towers. And the Coventry United players arguing amongst themselves. So the United players saying that it's embarrassing. They're 4 2 down against a, uh, a side in form. It's not quite embarrassing, but it is disappointing for the Red and Greens. Four goals conceded. It's not something that we. Expect from a side like Coventry United, who many people thought the start of the season were the favourites for the title. Reed dodges the challenge from Bowes across to the left flank with Bobby Mosley. Cross in towards McDonald. McDonald taken out and a goal back for United. McDonald again. A real scramble in the penalty area. And McDonald again gives Coventry United a route back into this game. What a fixture, I tell you what, we hyped this game up, we're saying it's one of the matches that we can't wait to see. This is why, for moments like this, the sheer determination of both sides to win this match for the local pride, for the bragging rights, and of course for the three points, it's 4-3. United refusing to lie down for their city rivals, their old landlords, it's 4-3. Oh, Sterling has left it and Ryan Harkin preparing himself for a chance to restore that two goal lead again and put Spinks just a little further out of reach of Coventry United. He's oh, an inch of doing it. Look for all the world as it was destined for that bottom corner, but it's just bounced on the wrong side of the post for Ryan Harkin. Up line to Faulkner. Trying to keep it on that touchline. Takes it past Rankin, takes it past Barnett as well. Brilliant run by Faulkner, taken out. And a free kick for diving, and Faulkner's off. Faulkner is off, it's a yellow card for diving for our man of the match, Charlie Faulkner. Well, that's the first on CUTV, the man of the match getting sent off. He went to the ground under the challenge, of, I believe it was Kyle Barnett, who did leave a leg trailing, but... It is indeed a red card for Faulkner, and Faulkner is uh, walking straight through the, uh, the centre of the pitch. He's not coming to the touchline. Punts it clear onto the head of 
the uh, substitute Dean. But it's not it back into United Territory. Coventry Spain seal their first ever victory over Coventry United. The Red and Green sealed a double over their former landlords last season. But the informed Sphinx continue their impressive form with a 4 3 win. I tell you what, you're going to want to see the highlight of this one, folks. A remarkable game for any football fan to watch. Coventry has been treated to an emphatic 90 minutes of football, but it is the blue side of Coventry who come out with the three points. The final score at Sphinx Drive Coventry Sphinx 4, Coventry United 3. An excellent result there for Sphinx and they now move up to fourth place and uh, if people thought they were going to fall away from that promotion race uh, I think um, I think they've well and truly been answered well and definitely in the mix are Sphinx. Now Long Beach United have been in some really good form of late and they welcome Shepshed Dynamo to Grange Park. Here are the, here are the goals from Dynamo TV. That's unreal, absolutely unreal that. Bloody hell. I got it. Well done. Oh! Yes! Come on! Come on, Shep! Shep! Come on! Come on, boys! A good win there for Longgate and keeping up their current run of form. Now Hena Town welcomed South Normanton Athletic struggling in the bottom three. They welcomed welcome them to the town ground. Here are the goals from Town Ground TV. Hey! Oh my goodness! Get in there, White! Come on now, Lions! That's Nile. 
Well, this weekend, it's FA Vars weekend with some excellent ties. Now, the betting, as usual, favours the Northern League clubs. Um, but all of our clubs um, have a real good chance of making progress. Hinkley, um, they travel to um, favourites for the entire competition. Mask United, um, they're on the northeast coast. And that looks a really, really tough tie. Mask in second place in the Northern League and Hinkley will do exceptionally well to make it through to the last 16. Premier Division League leaders uh, Colesall Town travel to Newcastle Benfield. If the Coleman can keep Paul Brayson quiet, very much their leading scorer and uh, he's been doing it for many many years for many many clubs and Colesall have got the quality and the form to get through. Now they warmed, Colesall warmed up for their long trip on Saturday with a League Cup tie at home to Sporting Calcer. Here are the highlights from Mark Brooks. It's a lovely ball. And, uh, oh. Referee, just because you ain't gone down, mate. And, uh, here's a miss. And Dominic Cotter into Granison. Granison does well, gives it to uh, Cole. Cole, good at the right. Here's uh, Ryan Edmonds. Oh yes, it's in and Sam Arnold is, uh, well, well he's, uh, <laughs> he won't want to look back at that one. French with this uh, corner. Here it comes. Oh, it's a good header. And it's a great goal. And uh, I think it's Mies. And uh, Sports in case for a level. Uh, Kinch. Oh, comes in, can wake up there, and it's a penalty. Yes, the refs give a penalty. And, uh, well, I think Luke, Luke Edwards is gobsmacked. Okay, he's going to be for Makosa Town. Man, Mikhail Beckley with this uh, penalty. Can he... Uh, Give Kels to the lead for the first time in the game. Here we go. Yes, he does. Mikel Beckley against his former club now makes it 2 1 to Sporting Kelsa. Taken to the edge of the box. Clipped in. Oh, it's a good header. Oh, he's hit the bar. <laughs> and I think it was uh, Robinson. And uh, he'll kick for Kozel. Mies. French again. Nice ball into uh, Bex. French gets a decent cross in. And oh, dear, Nathan Wade. He should have buried that one. I'm in the stand to be honest. He's uh, Ron Edmonds. Oh, good effort! Yes! And I think it's uh, Matt Gardner. And uh, on his return, Coastal Town have equalised. Okay, it's one two. Oh, it comes through. Yes! yes! Oh, he's getting offside. And oh dear, the linesman's not uh, popular. And uh, I think it was Joel that put the ball in the net. 
and uh, their idea controversial. Nice ball there to Gio. Gio, oh, lovely ball in, Gardner. Oh, ho, 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 just over. Oh, it was a glorious opportunity. And uh, well, <laughs> this game destined to go into uh, penalties. It's Sporting Council with the first penalty. Not quite sure who it is, but uh, I know when he turns round. Oh, and he's hitting over. <laughs> it's well, it's Bex. It's Mikhail Beckley. There goes a man, and there's Ginge going to get the ball. <laughs> Unbelievable stuff. Well, having scored a penalty in normal time, he misses now. Well, it's Matt Gardner, thanks to his equaliser. This is why we're into penalties. Can he give Coastal Town the lead? Oh, he does. He goes through Sam Arnold again. He's unlucky. Okay, I think this is Craig Bannister, the uh, Sporting Council legend. And it's a good penalty. It's no 1 1. Okay, we got Joe Cole, Captain Cole. Can Captain Cole give Coastal the lead? Oh, it's a super penalty. It's now 2 1 to Coastal. Okay, it's me for Sporting Council. Scored uh, their second goal in normal time, and that's a super penalty for me. It's now 2-2. Uh, Former Baltimore player Joe Smith with this one. Oh, what well, a super penalty! And now it's 3-2 to uh, Kozel Town. Uh, Cage Branch for Sporting Kelsey now. Oh, you cut us unlucky, and it's 3-3. Uh, three, three. Okay, this is uh, Joel. Oh, what a wonderfully, wonderful composed penalty that is. And uh, Coes will retake the lead. Okay, Captain Robinson has to score this. Oh, what a great save from Cotto, he's the hero. Coes will tango through to round four. And, uh, well, absolutely fantastic. And uh, Ginge gives him a bit of a hug and throws a towel at him in true Ginge style. And good to see Colesville using a number of their young players in that game, which I'm sure will... Uh, serve them well as the season progresses. Back to this weekend's FA Vars fixtures now and Bromsgrove Sporting travel to Wisbeach Town and this looks a really well balanced tie. Both clubs are second in their respective divisions and both have got particularly good home form. So that will be um, it'll be a tough one for Sporting. I expect this one to be easily the biggest gate of the round. I know there are three coaches going from the Victoria ground and there'll be many more in cars as well. And Wisbeach will attract a large following of their own uh, for such an important game. And I'm hoping that last year's Vars experience will be a real benefit for both Bromsgrove and Colesville, both beaten semi-finalists in the Vars last season. And uh, let's hope that both can make it all the way through to the final at Wembley to be held in May. Stourport Swifts travel to Northamptonshire to face Desborough Town. And then neither side are in great form at the moment in their respective divisions. But both will look at this as an opportunity to get that one one round nearer to a, a Wembley trip. And again, as far as Stourport are concerned, if they are on um, the best of their form, they have the they have the personnel, they have the goal scorers to win that game too. Westfields are the only one of our sides at home and they host handball club from the Sydenham's Wessex League uh, and to me it would be a huge shock if Westfields aren't in, the ne in, aren't in the draw for the next round to be held on Monday. Form, home advantage and cup experience all point to Westfields to win that one. And Wolverhampton Sporting Community, uh, they're off to Cookno. Um, I, I know that's not all it looks like but that's how it's pronounced, Cookno. United to face the Cooks and despite the one step difference I really fancy Wolves to do it again to reach the last 16. They've had a great run in the competition, already got some serious scalps and I think beating Shepshed 5-1 in the previous round will uh, 
will really stand them in good stead. So hopefully we will see a good number of our sides into the next round of the Vars. And obviously next week's programme, I'll be bringing in the, the draw for that last 16. The uh, Into the MFL this weekend, and with the top two in the Vars, Sporting Calcer can go top if they can win at struggling Hormond. Hormond losing at home last week to bottom club Shawbury United in the Shropshire Derby and uh, well entrenched in that bottom three. And uh, Coventry Sphinx travel to the aforementioned Shawbury United. Not necessarily an easy game, but with a form Sphinx are in, you have to fancy their chances of keeping this long unbeaten run going. And another game of interest in the MFL Premier Division, Hena Town against Worcester City. Both entertaining sides, and uh, that could be a really, really good game at the town ground. Into Division 1 of the Total Motion Midland Football League. And uh, last weekend, leaders Leicester Road were held three apiece by Utoxeter Town, despite holding a 3-0 lead well into the second half. Great recovery from Utoxeter. Now, this gave the chance for Warsaw Wood to close the gap at the top, and they took it with both hands. Here are the highlights. Yeah, 
A great win there for Warsaw Wood and uh, scoring lots of goals as well at the moment. Atherston Town remain just a point behind the wood. They welcome lowly Nunnett and Griff to the Mark Webster Community Stadium. Here's the coverage from Mark Brooks. Now it's Hewitt and uh, Delaney now coming forward and he's through. George to beat, good save and Delaney can't get the rebound. And well, Griff have got the better chances. Back to Billich. And now it's uh, Mitch Thompson. Good feet by Mitch. And oh, he gets away with it. Oh, it's a great effort. Oh, it's a fantastic goal. It's been a while coming. He's been unlucky, unlucky the last few games, but this time, right in the corner. That's a super finish. Comes in towards. No, oh, no, Eggy. Still Eggy. Oh, great boy. Oh, and Bill Owen, young J Man. Off the line. Absolutely superb defending by the 16 year old. That's a great ball towards uh, Mitch Thompson. Oh, Mitch has took it beautifully. He comes to Miller. Oh, good save from O'Neill. And he's unlucky. Side. and uh, it's going to be Norton oh just over it's a good effort okay it's going to be Ryan Quinn with the corner ball for the others they desperately need another goal low one towards Nort Nort back out to uh, Quinn Quinn oh it's a deep ball Kai Green Kai Green it's double the others lead a superb back post header from Ryan Quinn's cross. 
And that's exactly what they needed. Is there Quinn? Oh, looking for Thompson. And oh, yes, it comes to Mitch Thompson. Can he bury it? Oh, it's off the line by Rowe again. Thompson! Oh, it's off the line by Kirby. And they were claiming an handball, but the referee waves that one away. And quite rightly so, I think. Aston. Rolls in across. And Griffith got to go back. It's Lee Hewitt, I think. And well, it did have a feeling it was coming. Not. Oh, it's good ball, it's Miller. Oh, Miller still. And now it's uh, Ron Quinn. Oh yes! Ron Quinn makes it 3-1. Rowe did his utmost to try and get it off the line, but could only pull it into the stanchion. And uh, well. Ryan Aston, he's Malunga, and uh, well done by uh, Jonathan Gould. Oh, he's made him. It's beautiful play by Gould. That's not a bad looking ball, but O'Neill's going to get there. Well, good idea. Oh, he's in. Oh, Malunga! Oh my God! <laughs> is he did you let the ground? <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh, still three-one to the others. George with a good kick, and that's it, the Adders get the win. This weekend I've picked out three games for you. Littleton, who are in phenomenal form. They're at home to leaders Leicester Road. And uh, I have a sneaking suspicion that Littleton uh, may cause a bit of an upset there. They're in seventh place and uh, gunning for the top six themselves. Paget Rangers at home to Warsaw Wood. Both won three games over the holiday. Both scored a lot of goals and only conceded one apiece. That should be a really good one on the 3G at the Trevor Brown Memorial Ground. And uh, an intriguing one here for me is Coventry Alvis, bottom of the table, but under a completely new management team. They're at home to Orkiston Town. They're on this long winning run, but haven't played since the beginning of December. Not too sure how that one's going to pan out. Form tells you that it should be a comfortable Ilkeston Town win. But new management, uh, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of new faces in the Albi side, so who knows exactly how that one will pan out. Into Division 2 of the Total Motion Midland Football League now. And only one game reached a conclusion last week, with Moores Academy and Noel sharing a 1-1 draw at Tally Ho. This week, only four league fixtures, NKF Burbage, the leaders at home to Moores Academy, is my pick of the league fixtures. But a cup game well worth watching out for. It's the President's Cup semi-final. Fourth meets third. Feckenham at home to Hampton. Difficult one to call that one. I think Feckenham is probably in the better form, albeit they're a place lower. So um, should be a good one to go to if you want to see a cup semi-final. Division 3 of the Total Motion Middle and Football League. Now, four games last week, and didn't we see some goals? There were big wins for Bartistry and GMP Sports, both scoring seven. AFC Solihull scored five. So, you know, three, you know, in effect, the top three sides all winning big there. This week in the league, we see the bottom two meet the, top, meet the sides in second and third. While the game of the week... There's another cup tie. It's the semi-final of the Challenge Vars and it's between GMP Sports and FC Stratford. We've been talking a lot about both sides uh, throughout the season. Uh, two of the real heavyweights in Division 3. And that one's um, a tight one to call. Should be a cracking game. And I expect plenty of goals because both um, do score an awful lot. 
Moving into the West Midlands Premier League now, or the West Midlands League Premier Division, should I say. And uh, last weekend, uh, at the top of the division, Wolverhampton Sporting had an opportunity of closing the gap on Tividale, whose game was washed out. They welcomed bottom club Wellington Amateurs to Pride Park, and here are the goals. A great result there for Williams and Wolf Sporting in the end did well to uh, manage to get a point with that late equaliser. Black Country Rangers moved level on points with leaders Tividale after a stunning 7-2 win at Wolves Casuals. They're in fine form as well. Uh, my picks this week are Tividale at home to Hereford Lads Club and Dudley Town versus Black Country Rangers and... Uh, on form and on paper, you would expect the top two to win those games. But um, local derbies and in terms of lads club as well, they've improved since the start of the season. So uh, will be a bit of a test for Tividale. Into Division 1 of the West Midland Regional League. And Newport Town won the big game at Team Dudley. They won that one 3-1. Well, Wem Town maintained the pressure at the top with a 5-2 win over Bromyard Town. Not much in the terms of uh, geographical distance between those two sides and only three points between them in the league table as well when WEM have a game in hand. This weekend, Newport travelled to St Martins while WEM travelled to Tipton to face Bustle home. And uh, if the top two can win again, that really will set up that, uh, that bit of a title challenge between the pair of them into Division 2 of the West Midland Regional League now. And a big win last weekend for Seek Hunters, who uh, won at Butley Town Reserves. And there are also wins for Wolverhampton United and Gornal Colts. This weekend, um, the two games I've picked out, Warstone Wanderers in second, uh, meeting fifth place Butley Town Reserves. Again, another game that promises lots of goals. That's at Aldersley Stadium. And the bottom two meet with FC Darliston, the time to AFC Bridge North Development. Neither have got um, any any form at all of late. And uh, I think regular viewers will know how much I like a bottom of the table clash. Um, that's it in terms of highlights uh, for this week. Please continue to get your content in. We can't show it if we don't know about it. Next week we'll be announcing goal and save of the month for December. I'm going to leave you with this week's selections. Saves of the week come from Colin McCarthy of Litchfield City and Dominic Cotter of Colesville Town. And the goals of the week come from Mitch Thompson for Atherston Town and that screamer from Jordan Goddard of Hales Owen Town. Until next week, have a good week of watching football. ta <laughs> Great shot for the Lord! Great shot, Cooper! 
okay. Captain Robinson has to score this. Oh, what a great save from Cotter. He's the hero. Goes for Tango through to round four. And, uh, well, absolutely fantastic. And uh, Ginge gives him a bit of a hug and throws a towel at him in true gin style. Feet by Mitch and oh, he gets away with it. Oh, it's a great effort. Oh, it's a fantastic goal. It's been a while coming. He's been unlucky, unlucky the last few games, but this time, right in the corner. That's a super finish.